I'm Elena and welcome to my channel. Today I want to share an exciting video with you guys because yesterday Boy and I went exploring. We went to see some mini free libraries. I thought that they didn't really have a lot of them in the city where I live. If you don't know, I live in the Netherlands. I live in a city that is called the Book City. Every summer there is an annual book market that is the biggest one in Europe, which of course for the second year in a row is not going to happen. But there are going to be some events, so if I can participate in them, I will definitely share that on my channel. My library posted on Instagram that the city where I live has the most mini free libraries in the entire country. I think the most difficult thing is finding them. They shared a website that had a link all the free little libraries in my city. There are so many of them. I grabbed all the addresses and I made a guide on Google Maps. I expected it would take some driving to get to all the mini libraries I wanted to see, but there were already about 10 mini libraries within the radiance of two kilometers, I think. I decided to make multiple guides and I wanted to start off this video with my own neighborhood and the neighborhood next to that. So this is a neighborhood that is quite outside of the city center. It's where just people live, not work. So yesterday I packed a big pile of books that I had on hold, but that I still thought other people would enjoy. My intention was to uh, leave one and take one. And I did have multiple genres with me because I felt like I didn't want to put a thriller in a box that only had literary fiction or put literary fiction in a box that only had a romance or feel good. So I wanted to be able to put something in that box that people would actually like. So before I show you the books that I found, let's get back to yesterday and the exploring. Oh, there are a lot of movies as well. Oh, look at this. The Princess Bride. Ooh, I think I want to take a film. Oh boy, there's a game as well. An Xbox game. This will be a great film. It's like in the Giants maybe. David Sparrows. A lot of people talk about... Oh wow. <laughs> okay, I do not want this cover. of Don Juan. Jose Saramanco. Oh, this is a Portuguese author who won the Nobel Prize. Okay, I think I'm going to take the book, not so. Okay, what should we leave? I think this one fits with the other books. Hey, this is so cool. Okay. Yeah. Light of mine. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Smile. Okay, we need 
Wat voor liefde best wil ik vinden. Ik best wil ik net zien. Ja, waarom? Ik weet niet of ze wel uitkomt. Ik kom de kat kijken. Kijk dan. Hé, hoi. Okay, hi, we're back. I left five books and I took four and I think always leave more than you take. So that's what I did. I do have still some books left that I wanted to unhaul. So for our next trip, which will definitely come, which will definitely be another video. So subscribe if you want to see that video as well. I had one find that was so good, I gasped. I think I think you can tell in the video that I gasped. And that is Wolf Hole by Harry Mantel. I think every booktuber who likes historical fiction says that you need to read this. I think especially Charlotte from Corny Reads really loves this and she really made me want to read this. But it's a very big book and I was a little bit scared of it. But when I saw it in the mini library, I thought, okay, we're going to do this. And I'm very happy that it's also the English edition because most of the books I found in the mini libraries are of course Dutch translations, which I think is so wonderful that you can find that in a library because they are usually very expensive. And the more newer releases are not really available in the regular library because you have to wait for them for a very long time, which of course makes a lot of sense. But that is why I really like this concept because the other books I got are all Dutch translations. So I like that we can help each other out a little bit in this way. But this is the first book in two or three books in the series. So this is a historical fiction. In this simply one of the finest historical novels in years, the opulent brutal world of the Tudors comes to glittering bloody life. It is the backdrop of the rise and rise of Thomas Cromwell. Low-born boy, charmer, bully, master of deadly intrigue. I think it is quite detailed and very literary what I have heard from other booktubers. I really don't want to know too much about the story because I like it most of historical fiction to not know a whole lot. I don't know Know that much about British history. Of course I did get some British history in school because there are a lot of links with Dutch history as well. I'm really excited for this. I don't know when I will pick it up but I'm very happy to have found this in a mini library and I exchanged it for a Dutch 
historical fiction. I hope that whoever put this in will maybe like the one that I put in. Another one I found is an autobiographical book of José Saramago, who is a Portuguese author who won the Nobel Prize and I hear written a lot of novels and on the back it says that this is his novel about his childhood and early teenage years in which he talks about growing up in different parts of Portugal in the city in the rural country where his grandparents who couldn't read and write but were very wise that's what the back says and it sounds incredibly fascinating because the author was born in 1922 I know absolutely nothing about Portugal in the early 20th century. I've been to Portugal a lot, especially when I was younger, because my grandparents lived there. They weren't Portuguese themselves, but they moved there and when they retired. And I think they lived there for about 10 years before they came back to the Netherlands. Me and my mom usually visited them for um, a week in May. And I have such fond memories of the country. I have such fond memories of the nature in Portugal, because they lived in the forest near a very big lake. I was allowed to swim, but it was quite dangerous. So I remember my grandma always being incredibly nervous and one of the fondest memories I have is the fact that there lived a lot of dogs in that forest in that very very small village and my grandma had a really big heart and she fed all of the dogs. They would not trust anyone except for my grandma and occasionally when my grandma was like sick or something they would kind of trust my grandpa but they would always prefer my grandma and there were a lot of puppies. She tried to get the females neutered, but it was expensive and difficult. A few times I remember that there were puppies. Of course, when I was really young, I absolutely loved that. Growing up in the Netherlands is a very crowded country, so I wasn't at all used to all of that space when I went to visit my grandparents. And there was so much space. There were just the forest and the trees and the very old roads and the lake. I mean, we had a cat, which I loved, but the dogs were just really excited to see me. I don't think they were used to children. I really love them. So yeah, I don't know. It's, maybe it will feel a little bit nostalgic to read this. Mm, I'm getting a little bit emotional because of all the memories. I'm, I'm happy to have a Portuguese novel uh, in my collection. Another book I found I don't think I showed you because it was a mini library that was hidden really well. It took me a long time to find it. I remember circling around the street and wanting to give up and then I saw this very tall blue bookcase, which did have quite some good books. It wasn't the best one. I found a short story collection that is all translated. It says short stories from uh, Africa, Asia and Latin America, which I think is just really cool because you can get to know a lot of new authors. I did have a little bit of a browse and it seemed like most of the authors were all men. I don't have anything against, but when an entire collection in which you put almost 30 authors and you all pick men, I... Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I want to spend all of my time with this book. So I might exchange it again in another mini library to someone who doesn't really mind that. Yeah, I need to think about that. But I really like the concept of having a short story collection from uh, non-Western countries. I think my second favorite mini library I found was full of literary fiction. It had a few classics as well. But I picked a short story collection again because it sounded very interesting. And that it is a collection by Nezeru's Command. I searched how to say your name. I really hope I did it right. It is written in English, but this is translated to Dutch. The Sea Cloak and Other Stories is the original title. The author is from Palestine and she has very strong feelings about children's refugees. And I think these short stories are about that, are about their voices and their stories. It says that she grew up in a Syrian refugee camp because her parents fled Palestine. And I think the cover is absolutely beautiful. And these are the kind of books that are just so expensive to buy in the bookstore. So I think this is a great find. This is another one of the mini libraries that I will definitely visit again. Also because I think that the books I will on whole will contribute to their collection, which I think to me is almost more important than being able to get a good book from there because I had quite a big pile I wanted to unhaul and because of Covid I hadn't really been able to give them to charity or anything like that. So I really like the fact that someone else will now enjoy the books. So I'm very happy to say that I got some new books and it felt so incredibly exciting because I didn't have to spend any money. <laughs> I know I will love and keep this one but the other ones I can just dip in and out of, I can try out and if I don't like them or if they're not for me I can just give them to an other mini library then 
the one I got it from. Thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it. I think I'm going to do more videos like this. I'm going to show you a little bit more of the city where I live in, the book city. Um, in the end screen I will leave a vlog where I take a little walk to the city and you can get a bit of a snippet of it. So if you're curious to see that then click on that video and I hope to see you in another video. Doei!